Welcome back to another Post Media Ottawa Senators panel. I'm Bruce Garriock of Post Media in Ottawa with special guest Nick Kiprios, a former NHL player and broadcaster, won the Stanley Cup with the New York Rangers in 1994. Nick, thanks for joining us. Uh, let's start out with the Senators. They've made an awful lot of changes this season. We've seen a lot of uh, older players moved out, and I get the sense that when the, when the season does start, Nick, this team is going to be handed over to the younger players. Well, it's certainly uh, lending towards that, uh, no question about it. Uh, I, I look at, uh, first of all, a, a ton of uh, attention uh, to the Ottawa Senators, something that we haven't seen in the past. And when you have so many teams pressed up against the cap, then you've got the Ottawa Senators who, you know, for all intent and purpose, had to get to a floor. I mean, the, there's a mandate there. It's not just signing players because they want to, it's because they have to. But in saying that, You've got to go get quality people, people that have had reputations for being serviceable, uh, not only in the National Hockey League, but then you get uh, a goaltender that's won a Stanley Cup. So I, I like I like the things that they've done with the players that they've done. Now, in saying that, the changes do come at a bit of a price. Hainsey and uh, Borvietsky are two guys that I thought provided a tremendous amount of leadership and when you speak of maybe a younger generation slowly taking over this team, they still need those type of presence in the room. I thought the Ottawa Senators lost a little bit, especially when it came to uh, a guy like Hainsey. You touched briefly on it, Nick, but what do you think about the acquisition of a guy like Matt Murray? I think it sends a message to guys in the room like Connor Brown and Chris Tierney that, that this team does want to compete and that the area they wanted to stabilize was the net. Well, there's no question that we can talk about any generation, um, any team in any generation. And the common denominator out of any of those teams is great goaltending. And you cannot win without it. I don't care how many stars you have in front. I don't care if you had the lineup that the Edmonton Oilers had in the 80s. It uh, doesn't work without Grant Fuhr. And what Matt Murray is able to do is come in with a reputation, first and foremost, I mean, signing a, a contract over $6 million for any goaltenders, huge now. Uh, Markstrom proved that. But they paid. They paid a, a, a dear price for, for Matt Murray, but he comes in with a Stanley Cup a resume. And not only can he provide a great goaltending, he can also be that voice of reason that passes on, hey, what's the secret, right? What's the Cadbury secret to winning a Stanley Cup? And and what's what's Sidney Crosby like? Can you imagine now um, sitting at, at a dinner with Matt Murray to share those stories with some of those younger players? And that is, to me, uh, the complete package of what Matt Murray can bring to the Ottawa Senators. And it's interesting you talk about those younger players because – one of the key acquisitions in all of this has been the has been bringing in uh, Tim Stutzla at number three in the draft, and then of course they took Jake Sanderson from UND at number five. But what I find interesting is you kind of thought that maybe Ottawa should trade that three and five to get Alexis Lafreniere before the draft. I thought that was an interesting take. Why did you think that way? Well, I just think from a marketing perspective and the fact that uh, your your biggest rival is the Montreal Canadiens and to have that that French Canadian presence uh, during that rivalry uh, could really make things interesting. And that's not taking anything away from from uh, from Stutzel and what type of player that he can be. Um, but still a tremendous pick. And we know when when the season starts, he's going to be in an Ottawa Senator uniform. The question is, what, what does center really look like for the Ottawa Senators? And even with all these changes, you really have to ask yourself, okay, Dandenov, proven score, and you did pay a price at $5 million a year for him. But between him and Brady Kachuk, who, who is the centerman? Right now, uh, I, I look at Galchenyuk and – you look at the number of teams that he's played for, and that usually is reserved for someone well into their 30s, not someone that just turned 26. Yeah. They're still thin up the middle from, from kind of quality compete standards of the National Hockey League now. So 
that's the only question right now for me is even even when Tim comes over, what kind of player is he going to be? How much time does he need? And, and do you throw him right into that uh, environment that says, be one of the top centermen for us? It might be a little bit too much too soon. Well, and, and one of the things, just the last thing on, on Stutzler, though, uh, Nick, is at, it, it would be too much to throw him in at center at this juncture, wouldn't it? Just let him learn on the wing, and then in two years down the road, shift or to center, maybe a year down the road, especially if it's a short season, Nick? Well, I, I think that's – that. you want to protect yourself and you want to protect your, your your top prospect. So I, I don't necessarily disagree with that, but you know what it's like for some of these guys in, in managerial positions, and and not, not that I'm you know reading the tea leaves for Pierre Dorian, but usually those guys will let the, the player dictate on, on how much – and where he'll play. So if he comes in and and knocks their socks off early, I think all bets are off. That's how much pressure there is for the here and now uh, with many teams, not just the Ottawa Senators. Well, coming off that, Nick, one of the things that DJ Smith has told me is that uh, the club will not have a captain this season. And down the road, I would suspect it's either going to be Brady Kachuk or Thomas Shabbat. Thomas Shabbat has already signed an eight-year extension to stay with the team. Brady Kachuk is in a, a restricted free agent next summer. Who do you think the leadership should fall to on this team? Brady Kachuk, and I don't hesitate for one second, and that's not to take away anything from Shabbat, who's uh, a wonderful talent and will be one of the leaders of the Ottawa Senators. But Brady gives you uh, a layer of compete that, that few players have, and his brother has it in Calgary. So they're cut from the same cloth. There's no question that they're, they're, they're seen in so many similar ways, but the one thing that stands out is the level of compete. And sometimes that includes doing things that you're, you're not often uh, proud of at times, but you're, you're willing to, to push the envelope. And that's what may, makes Matthew Kachuk so valuable is that he's willing to go places that other players won't go. And I think Brady has that quality. The problem is, is you don't want to put that on his shoulders uh, this early in his career. So I understand the feel for bridging a year, I'd say at, at the most, a year yeah. before you make Brady Kachuk a captain. So you're going to lean on the Connor Browns, the Chris Turneys, the Matt Murrays in the room to really give him another year to season uh, and be ready. And the other thing too is, I know Ottawa fans are keeping an eye on this, but he's going to need a new contract. You know, the hesitation when he first got drafted by Ottawa still kind of lingers. By this time next season, he will be staring at a new contract. If it happens to be an eight-year contract like Shabbat signed in the vicinity of eight, nine million dollars, then you've got your commitment from Brady Kachuk. Then you throw in the C on his jersey. And, and I think it's interesting because the owner has shown a commitment uh, to to back the plan, and he made the commitment to Thomas Shabbat. They made the commitment to Colin White. And and I would suspect down the road they will make the commitment to to Brady Kachuk. And that leads us to you you have uh, you've authored a book with uh, former Toronto Sun uh, columnist uh, Perry Lef Lefko called Undrafted, and it's basically your story about being in hockey, but. I'm sure one of the one of the things that uh, you've talked about in the in that book is the leadership that Mark Messier had in, had in New York. That was just another level, wasn't it, Nick? It really was, uh, Bruce. And you know, sometimes I, I listen to conversations and people question whether or not you need a captain anymore, and it doesn't do what it used to do. And I just sitting there going, "No, you even need it more." I am a firm believer whether. It's a, a dressing room or a corporation or working at Sun Media that you need an alpha dog. You need somebody at the very top where, where he says the, the buck stops with me. And that was Mark Messier right from the get go. They had missed the playoffs the year before uh, I arrived and it was painful, but it was clear, unlike the Ottawa Senators, where they had to win and they had to win now. And the pressure was all about 1994. It wasn't about 95 or 96 or building towards something. It was the here and now, the present. 
And Mark, from the moment I walked into the dress room and I talk about first meeting with him and the time that he takes, not just for any new player uh, or not just for me, but any new player, it's all about uh, being that last piece to a puzzle and valuing all your pieces. And yes, the attention goes to uh, Brian Leach and a Mike Richter, but Mark truly knows to, to finish off and, and complete the championship puzzle you need every small piece. And he not only valued me and many of the black aces at the time that were in and out of the lineup, but I watched him handle people in the administration office. Right down to Tommy, who did our laundry at the practice facility, he valued everybody. And if there wasn't a smile on people's faces when they walked in the room for the pure enjoyment of coming to the rink every day, he was going to find out why. Hmm. That's interesting. And, and just to wrap this up, you, you've you've actually been fairly busy uh, since you left SportsCenter a year ago. Not only did you do the book Undrafted, uh, you and your wife released a cocktail with the LCBO called Little Buddha. Had a little taste the other night. Did you like it? I did like it. And 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 let and my wife liked it. Even my wife Maria liked it even more. But let me let's just finish this off by talking. Why did you decide to tell your story, Nick? Is it because you weren't drafted and you want to send a message to people that, you know what, never give up. As it's been well documented, Bruce, I, I ended a, a 21 year uh, run at Sportsnet and it was a fantastic run. And uh, I had, I had a second career. I had a great second career. So I had two stories to tell one of hockey and, and one of broadcasting and uh, when I wrapped up at Sportsnet, I, I, I got pitched by the idea from Perry Lefko. I, I didn't think that there was much of a book to be written, to be quite honest with you. And he convinced me otherwise. And now is the time to do it, Bruce. Now, while things are still fresh in my mind and, and, and I can get the message out, I, I so appreciate you know watching a guy like Connor McDavid or Sidney Crosby uh, be the best player every year since they first tied on skates and that didn't change at the pro level but that's only a a a one (laughs) percent there's the rest of us that have to find a different way to get there so the book is really about finding different ways to get to the same destination and i had my knocks from uh five teeth knocked out uh on one stick incident and five root canals to shoulder surgery to knee surgery to you know uh not starting uh my pro career with the team that I signed for with the Philadelphia Flyers. There are countless amount of stories of, of falling down, but finding ways to get back up. And I hope for all those kids who aren't destined like Sidney Crosby, that they will, they will take those stories out of the book and say, yeah, I, I can find a, a, a different way uh, to the same destination as well as Nick Kiprios. Well, we really appreciate your time today, Nick. Thanks very much for joining the Senators panel. Uh, next time, we're going to bring your sidekick, Doug. Doug yes. Uh, and just just a quick note, uh, Real Kipper at Noon is another project that I started. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Bruce, for for allowing me uh, uh, and, and Doug to kind of tell our story. It's on YouTube. It's daily during the season. Um, uh, the website's linemovement.com. And yes, Doug McLean has played a, a nice uh, side role again for me. We wanted to create Hockey Central at Noon digitally and and we've been able to do that with real kipper at noon and this is my set this is where it all happens <laughs> thanks very much for your time nick and and uh, we'll see you next time appreciate you joining the senators panel i'm bruce garriock for post media in ottawa